Brethren, what we have on the screen is one of the most confusing verses if you still need to read the original text. Here is where the post-trib believers get their beliefs, because they were not worried here. After all, the day of the Lord is approaching. How will a believer worry because the day of the Lord is not coming? The ones worried were the Thessalonian church, concerned because they were writing, as if the day of the Lord had already passed and it will be demonstrated the truth through the Greek language, we will prove. They were utterly disturbed, so much so that the Apostle Paul wrote them a letter. Imagine it was an average time. Letters were written between churches. The church was well planted there in Thessaloniki, was expected, time. And they knew perfectly that the church's rapture would be an average time. They weren't here worried about the second coming, because the Lord's second coming would be after God's wrath. There were clear signs that almost everything would be destroyed at that moment. They knew perfectly well that if they had not been caught up before the wrath of Satan, they would have to pass and be until the end. If not, they would have died. Let's see why they are worried. On the King James Version says poorly translated, I'm going to read it to demonstrate the translation is wrong. 2 Thessalonians 2.2 says, That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Well, the first question is, why do I have to be, let's say, somehow disturbed? On the contrary, as the Apostle Paul says, I have to be happy and exhort one another and more when that day truly approaches. If we read the originals, we will realize they were perturbed before Apostle Paul answered because they thought the Lord had already come. So look what the original says here. There it says that word that translates as he is near, and in the original it says, has stood on the day of the Lord. He has stood on the day of the Lord. He has already come. He has come on the day of the Lord. That's why I always say that to study or to prepare something about the Word of God, nowadays you must look at the interlinear. Today we have this technology. We have to exploit it. Twenty years ago, the ones who had a strong dictionary were the ones who studied theology. Today, we have it here on the Internet, and we don't look at it and keep thinking that those translations need to be corrected in one word. Look what changes! It says, He has stood up, has already come, past tense. So they were clear, like many Christians today, that the second coming is the same as the rapture moment. In the second coming, every eye will see his coming. It will be a disaster. There will be changes in the sun and the moon, and they won't give their glow as we are going to see now. You can see for yourself in an interlinear, it is not the same to say the Lord is close than the correct translation saying he has already come. Well, obviously, they have the wrong understanding believing the church will pass through the great tribulation. What is true is that the rebel church that is not digging in the word of God to find the truth and rely on what others are teaching will go the great tribulation, but not the church of the promise. Revelations mention seven churches. One is from the promise and another won't be going through the time of the test. So we can see they are waiting on regular days because, yes, everything that is announced was announced. They already had Matthew 24. They already had the Gospels and the Apostle Paul's guidance. He had been with them and had already told them, that's why he told them, do not let yourselves be confused or perturbed as if he had already come. If these verses were talking about the second coming, it should be a different talk. There will be an announcement of the second coming, as Joel says, as well as many biblical passages. Look at the scriptures and what the second coming will look like, and here is the confusion of many. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be dark, and the moon will not give its glow. So why would they be worried if they already had the gospel? Thessalonian church already knew it says, The moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of heaven will be shaken. It's all this before the Lord appears in the clouds according to Matthew 24. Then the sign will appear. I can't believe that there are still people today because there have come many false teachers who after announcing all this can think that the Lord will return here to earth and, at that moment, will ascend to pour out the wrath of God. This is incorrect because this is when the Lord ends a century, as when he answers the apostles' question in Matthew 24.3. When all this happens, he appears, month as announced. 
If you read Matthew 24, you will find a lot of signs of some atrocities, including signs of geographical Israel. It will be a disaster, and some preach that the Church of the Promise will be there. The rebel church is the only one that will be there. Then the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming above the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, in verse 31, and will send his angels with great voice and trumpet, and they will gather their chosen of the four corners of the earth. Notice that here the ones who collect are the angels, and the collect in Thessalonian, which is known as the rapture, is the Lord himself who collects believers in the clouds, because he reaches up to the clouds, the second coming to earth, as Zechariah says, he places his feet on the planet. The ones that will be collected are the 144,000. You will wonder why the 144,000 were sealed, so that the wrath does not harm them, and that is why they are collected from the four corners of the earth. Then, some other worthy ones could be taken and remain survivors, as Zechariah says. But we see that there are two different events, and the Thessalonica church was worried because they continued living on regular days and expected it to be on average days. The days will be abnormal during the second coming days when the sun will not shine. Matthew 24, and then it's announced. Thessalonians speaks of a blink of an eye, but here, as we see, it will be an event that every eye will see him coming. There are two completely different scenarios. We also notice that, in the book of Revelations, he says that the Lord touched the moon in the bowls of wrath. The sun is in a third part, so it did not shine in a third part of the earth. Still in the wrath, the sun and the moon are active, so it falls off logical that at the time the moon and the sun won't give their glow. What event of those two would you put first? When the moon is active and the angel can still do it, it can manipulate the moon to hurt it. It's a cup of wrath. You can see it in Revelation 16 verse 8 and the judgment in Revelation 8 verse 12. Therefore, we agree with the post-tribulation believers that God has not set us up for wrath. If you are wrong in the chronology, you can be mistaken. I would tell you your Hollywood story rather than an actual biblical teaching. Then, to conclude this video, we see they already knew all these events. They did not have the book of Revelation because it was written later, but they had the reference of Matthew. These two events are different because of their scenario and due to the chronology. We can see that in the second coming, the Lord appears on the last day. The Lord won't destroy the sun and the moon, and then it will be reactivated to start the wrath. Obviously, the Lord has not given us the overcomes, the obedient, appointed to wrath. Therefore, he has to remove us before the great tribulation and the wrath. This was what the Thessalonians church was waiting for, and not the second coming. Blessings, my beloved. Take the good and throw away the bad.